Hi, I'm Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of R&K Distributing and I want to welcome you to this month's Project of the Month. This month we're going to do a heart applique hot pad and we are also going to add echo quilting around our applique. So let's go ahead and get started. I want you to put your mouse cursor on top of your Floriani icon on your desktop and double left mouse click. As your Floriani software opens, the first screen that is going to come up and be available to us is our My Floriani Today screen. This screen always has a lot of good information on it. If you are hooked up to the internet, if your internet connection is active, it will look exactly as you see on my screen. If you are not on the internet, you will get a screen telling you that you are not hooked to the internet. However, it does not keep you from using your software if you're not onto the internet. But let's look at the information we've got on this screen. The first thing that usually grabs our attention is any time we see the word download because it tells us something new might be available. So here you can see it says download version 3.22. Now you could actually left mouse click on this link and it would take you directly to the website where you could download the update. But I do want you to note the paragraph below it. It says very clearly, do not download if you already have version 3.22. Now how do we know what version we're running? Let's check now. I want you to come up to the top right hand corner of this box, put your cursor over the red box with the X in it, and left mouse click to shut down this window. Then if you notice along our toolbar here at the top, there is an I. This is for information or about. I want you to left mouse click, and it is going to show you exactly what version of the software you're running. As you can see, I'm running version 3.22, so I have no need to update at this time. I will select OK, and I'm going to come back up to the top of my screen, and I'm going to bring my Floriani Today back up by left mouse clicking on it, because I want to show you the rest of the information available to you. Now if you look on the left hand side, you're going to see we've got lots of links to different pages on our website. One of them tells you how to download more videos. You can download all the tutorial videos and be able to watch them right from your Floriani software anytime that you reach a point where you can't remember how to do something or you want to try something new. Our Floriani support forum, we want everybody to join. This is a, a forum that is all educational. There's lots of activity, questions, and things going on on it that you might enjoy joining and just reading and seeing what's going on. Our online manuals, our product registration and support desk, our lessons from the master videos. These are videos that Walter has done that you can download directly from the website. We have our facts, our stabilizers, and threads. Now along the bottom of our page, we have create a new design. Open a design. Now I want to explain this. This is where you can open any existing design that is anywhere on your computer, on an external hard drive connected to your computer, a flash drive, or a CD-ROM. If you have another brand of software and have a designs folder within that software, you can access any of the designs in those folders as well. And remember, Floriani will open every format on the market. Open recently used, if you all have been following my lessons already, you already know that this is one of my favorite features of Floriani software. I work on designs a lot of time very late at night, and I'll shut my software down and the next day when I go back to work on them, I realize I don't remember where I saved the design. By going to Open Recently Used, it will bring up the last design that I was working on right up onto my workspace. Well, we're going to start today with Create a New Design. Now, I always show you how to make your workspace, which is this in front of us, how we make it work for us. Our first question normally is, what am I going to work in today? Inch inches or metric? Now today, 
for this exercise we are actually going to start out in metric so I want to show you your ruler bar which goes along the top and down the left hand side by putting your cursor anywhere along this bar and right mouse clicking on it you will get a drop down box I call this right clicking for treasure anytime you right click in Floriani software you get a treasure chest full of more options that you can use we are going to select metric so I will left mouse click my button is clicked there and I have a metric toolbar now the next thing I want to do is set the size of my grid setting the size of your grid makes so many things easy for you and today you'll see a real wonderful use of that grid setting so I'm going to come up here to the top I am going to right mouse click again and I'm going to come down to grid settings and I will left mouse click on grid settings now I am going to leave my maintain aspect ratio box selected and with that selected I am going to type in 3.5 that makes that 3.5 millimeters both horizontally and vertically and I am going to select OK so you can see we have our grid system up on our screen what we are going to do today is we are going to take artwork and from the artwork we're going to create appliques and then we're going to add our quilting around it so the first thing we need to do is we need to load our backdrop image so I am going to come over to my left hand toolbar and I'm going to move down till I reach the load backdrop tool icon it's the eighth icon on the left we will then left mouse click on it and it will bring up my folders where my images are now I have scanned in an image and you have had that included with this class so we will left mouse click on our image and I will now left mouse click on the word open and my hearts have come up onto screen now these hearts are the actual size that we are going to use so the first heart I want to digitize is our top small heart now I want you to hit your escape key and remove the control boxes around it and then I'm going to come up here to my zoom pane you can see it right here at the top and I am going to go ahead and zoom in to about a hundred percent scrolling back up I'm going to first digitize our small heart now you can make that as large as you want on your screen if it works better for you at two hundred percent by all means go ahead and bring it up larger <clears throat> now the reason I have put this grid at 3.5 millimeters is that is the actual stitch length we are going to use in our applique stitch and you'll see as we go along so I want you to come up to your top toolbar and we are going to left mouse click on my applique tool it looks like a green porcupine so let's left mouse click now the minute I click on that I want you to notice our properties box just came up and everything I can do to that applique is right in front of me now I want you to notice that my stitch length is 3.5 that is why I set my grid at that size I could have set my grid if I wanted to change the stitch length I could have certainly changed my grid now we are going to end up eventually using the E stitch on this or the blanket stitch so I want to make sure that when my blanket my legs are coming in on my applique that I can kind of control what happens right here at this center point so it looks attractive so with this tool selected I am going to digitize around this heart but if you notice I've got this line that's pretty well in the center of my artwork and I am going to gauge that for my first stitch I am not going to start at the point on the inside point of this heart 
I am going to actually start 3.5 millimeters away from it. So you can see how my grid helps me. Now putting my cursor there, I am going to left mouse click and you will see my first little control box. I am going to continue excuse me let me get this I am going to continue to go clockwise around my heart and I am going to go just along the edge of this now if you would like to have a curve you can hold down your control key and if you notice I'm gonna kinda drag this across a little bit I didn't put it right on the edge and I will left mouse click kinda come inside and do the same and as you can see this is kind of rounding out around the edge. If you are not exact, don't worry, because we're going to look at how to move any of those points that we don't like where they are later. Now, as you come down to where it gets straighter, do not hold down your left, your control key. Go ahead and just left mouse click. You can also use shorter stitches for control points and not need to use your curve if you don't wish. As you can see, I'm going around the outside of this heart here and I'm not using my control key at all to cause a curve. I am just using short stitch lengths in my control point. Now the actual stitch length when we digitize this will always be 3.5 but I've kind of con controlled the contour of this stitch and then I'm going to come just a little bit past that point that I first digitized and I'm going to left mouse click for my last point. Now as you can see, we've got our points all around this heart. I am now going to right mouse click and that is going to turn that into an applique. Now it is a satin stitch, so I will come over to my left hand toolbar and at the top I'm going to left mouse click on my select key and you notice it will select that stitch. I'm going to come to my properties box and the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to change this to an e-stitch. I'm going to keep my width and length the way it is. I do not want a placement line on this because we are going to pre-cut our digitized shapes for our applique so we don't need a placement line. We're just going to use our tack down and our finish line. So I'm going to deselect placement line. On my inset, I'm going to change this. Let's apply this first so we can see exactly why we're doing what we're doing. Let's go ahead and apply this. Now you notice that my line is well outside my heart because I have a tack down line, then I have the finish line so it would actually catch the edge of your fabric. But because this is not a satin stitch, I do not want this between my lines. So I'm going to come over to the inset and say I want the inset to be 100% on my, and I want my tack down at zero. Again, we are going to left mouse click on apply. And do you see how nicely that fits right over the tack down line around our piece of artwork? Now we have one other command we want to do while this is selected. I want to come into my applique, into my commands, left mouse click on that, and do you see where it says tie in and tie off? We want this to tie in with a nice little triangle, and I want it to tie off with a nice little triangle. Now once I've done those, I want you to notice you have 190 stitches right here at the top or thereabouts. We're all not going to have exactly the same stitch count because we all digitize a little bit different around that edge. I am now going to apply that and you will notice it's added six stitches, three for the tie on and three for the tie off. I have now completed that small heart. So we're going to move down to our next heart which is our medium sized heart it's a little big on my screen so I'm going to go ahead and type in maybe 1.75 percent in my view box hit your enter key and you can see now it's 
scale down enough that I can see it on screen and I can go ahead and digitize around it. Again, I will hit my, I will, I'm sorry, excuse me. We are going to click off anywhere on the screen to deselect these stitches. Now we are going to select our applique tool once again by left mouse clicking on it. The next thing I want to do is use the next color. Color blue was used first because it's the first color in our default thread chart. I am going to now put my cursor on color number two at the bottom of your screen. And we will now right mouse click and I have now applied color two to my applique. Again, I can see this is about the center. I want to come up using my grid to make sure I go up about 3.5 millimeters for my stitch length and I'm going to left mouse click and again we are going to do the same thing. We're going to click around this heart. Remembering if you want to create curves and not do a lot of shorter stitches hold down your control key Pull this across. I'm going to left mouse click. I still have my control key down. Left mouse click. Again, my control key is still held down. And you can see how that is making it curve out very, very nicely. As I get closer down here, I'm going to let go of my control key because I want to go ahead and keep my stitches right along the edge of this heart artwork and we're going to go ahead and click along and finish up this heart. And you can see how simple this is, how easy. We're just doing a series of left mouse clicks. We will come back and look and see if we need to edit any of our points. After we're finished, again, I'm going to just pass this stitch. I'm going to left mouse click and now I will right mouse click and this will become actual stitches. I want you to select it using your select key and again we are going to change this to an E stitch. We want our we do not want the placement line we're just going to put our tack down line. We are again going to change our inset to a hundred percent and our tack down to zero I am going to apply that. I'm going to come up to my commands and I'm going to set my tie-in triangle, my tie-off triangle by a series of left mouse clicks and then I will left mouse click on the word apply and I have just digitized my second heart. Now we have our third one to go which is our large one and again it's a little large for the screen so I'm probably going to set this at Let's try 150% and hit our enter key. And yeah, now we can fit, well, no, maybe we're going to have to go down to 100% on this one. There you go. And now you can see it on screen. Again, we're going to left mouse click anywhere on our screen to deselect our second heart. I am going to left mouse click on that applique tool again come down we are going to right mouse click on our green and here we go again gauging your 3.5 by using your grid let's go ahead and click around this heart remembering you can hold your control key if you want to do some little curving here to use less points Remembering to let it go as you get to the straight. And let's continue to click around this heart shape. Now where I got these shapes from is you can use actually any shape you ever want. All you have to do is scan it in and you can see how easy this is to work with to create your own appliques. I'm going to click right past that. Now I will right click, that will become real, select it by using left mouse clicking on your select tool again. 
we will come up here and we are going to deselect placement line. I will set my inset for 100%. I will put my tack down at 0. I will apply this. Very, oops, I forgot to change it to my E stitch, excuse me. Apply it. There you go. Let's go left mouse click on our commands tab. And again, left mouse click on our tie end, select triangle. Left mouse click on our tie off, select triangle. And again, left mouse click on apply. We have now completely digitized those three pieces of artwork. What we're going to do now is I think I'm going to fit it to screen just so we can look at them. And I want you to come down your left hand toolbar. There was your load backdrop tool. Keep coming down. And we are now going to turn off our artwork. And I want you to look at your hearts on screen. Now our grid looks wild because we've got it at that 3.5 millimeters. That's okay because now we're going to change our grid. We have done with our stitch lengths. And I want you to notice, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in by selecting my magnifying glass on the left hand toolbar. And I want to just kind of zoom in and I want you to notice, do you see how this stitch goes up and down in the center? That's because we went over about 3.5 millimeters and made a comeback so that I knew that it would drop that first leg at its 3.5 millimeter length and it would look very attractive to have that centered in the heart. Let's now hit our escape key because it will let go of our magnifying glass and I want you to come up to your ruler bar and now we're going to right mouse click on it and I am going to change to inches. I'm going to right mouse click on it again and I'm going to go to my grid settings and I'm actually going to set this at one inch. Of course my vertical will change proportionately because my maintain aspect ratio has been selected. So let's say OK and now we've got a nice clear one inch grid system. Now I want you to notice that this heart isn't exactly straight. So let's go ahead and grab it by getting our select tool and clicking on it. Do you see your, whoops, I deselected it. Do you see your little blue circle up in the right hand corner? That is your rotate icon. So I am going to grab it and you notice when my cursor gets on it, it turns into a little half circle with arrows. Holding down your left mouse key, rotate your heart till it's straight. So now it looks nice and straight up and down. Make sure your others look good. I might rotate this guy just a hair. And we're doing this because we want to really uh, get used to using all of our tools in our software. And let's look at our big heart. Actually, it looks pretty good. Now, if I wanted to check and make sure I liked, see, I, this one maybe doesn't look as good right here on the curve. If we wanted to look at this, we can always turn our artwork back on. As you can see down here, I'm going to load my tool again. And I can see, I'm going to zoom in so you can see maybe a little better. I can see right here that I don't like how this is on the edge of my heart. It's really not good. So I can select this specific heart by getting my select tool and clicking on it. And I'm going to come to my third icon down which is now my shape tool. We're going to left mouse click on it. And you're going to notice there's my blue boxes. Do you see I can grab this and pull it out? I can grab this one and pull it in. So if I wanted to make sure that this was better along the edge, I could do it. Once I'm happy, I hit enter on the keyboard and do you see how my stitches moved out very nicely there? Oh, here's one I don't like. Let's just move that guy in. Hit enter. So you can see even if you didn't do a perfect job, it doesn't matter and I'm just tabbing around my screen to look at this. You can see that we could fix any of these points by just grabbing the point, pushing it in and hitting enter. 
Well, I think that looks pretty good now. Enter, and you can see how easily we could have fixed anything that we didn't like. Let's go ahead and fit it to screen. Now that that has been done, I will go ahead and hit my Select tool and click anywhere on my screen. Turn off your Backdrop tools again by coming to this Backdrop icon, left mouse click on it, and there are our three applique hearts. You notice they are right here also in our sequence view and I can go down and select them that way. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to select my hearts. I've got my first one. I'm going to hold my control key down and continue to select my hearts. I have all three of them selected. With them selected, I am going to put my cursor inside the box and right mouse click. We are now going to use our Align tool. So let's come down to Align because we right mouse clicked on it for treasure. We've selected Align by left mouse clicking and we're going to come down and select the word Center. So left click on Center. I want you to notice our hearts are all perfectly centered one inside the other on our screen. We really have it perfect. Now what I want to do is I'm going to use my outside heart, which is my green one. I can either select it by left mouse clicking on it in my sequence view, which makes it very easy to select these. And with this selected, I want to create my quilting lines. I want to do echo quilting around this and I want to do everything in the hoop. So with this selected, I am going to go ahead and fit it to screen just so we can look at it better. I will right mouse click on this and I am going to left mouse click on the word copy. I am going to right mouse click on it and I am going to left mouse click on the word paste. If you notice, I just pasted a second applique right on top. But with it still selected, I'm going to come down to my color bar and I'm going to right mouse click on the number four color or orange. Do you see how that just added it down? But I don't want it to applique. I want a simple running stitch. So I will right mouse click on it. I will tell it convert it to a run and left mouse click on the word run. So now I have a running stitch right on top of this applique. The next thing I need to do is transform the size. So with it selected I'm going to left mouse click up in my properties view on the transform. And you can see that the width of this is 4.15 inches. Well, I want my echo quilting to come. I want to put three lines of quilting and I want them to be three eighths of an inch away from the heart. So three eighths of an inch in, in our inches would be 3.375. We're just going to go with 0.37. So in my box, it says it's 4.15 inches. Yours will be a little different depending on how closely you digitize that heart. So I am going to add to 0.15. I'm going to add 0.37. So that's going to give me 0.52. And I'm only going to have to change the width because my height, of course, will change proportionately. I am going to apply that and there is my first line of echo quilting. I will again right mouse click. Let's for treasure, let's copy. Let's right mouse click and let's paste. Let's go to transform. And let's add to our 0.52. Let's go ahead and add 0.37 which will give us 4.89. So we are going to go ahead and change this to 4.89. Again, I will apply it. And there's my second line of quilting. I want a third and final line of quilting. 
So I'm going to right mouse click, left mouse click on the word copy. I'm going to right mouse click and left mouse click on the word paste. And I will again left mouse click on my transform tab up in my properties box and I will add 0.37 to that which will give me 5.26. So 5.26, apply it, and as you can see I've got my three lines of quilting. Now one thing I want to go back and check here is I'm going to select my first line of quilting and I actually am going to use my sequence view because it makes it very easy. Let's go ahead and select the first one, the run stitch, and I want you to come up, whoops I lost it, run stitch, come up to the word commands again, left mouse click, and let's go ahead and add a triangle tie in and a triangle tie off to this, apply. Let's go to our second run stitch. Again, let's go to our commands tab. Let's add a triangle tie in, a triangle tie off, and let's apply that. And let's go ahead and pick our third run of quilting. Again, left mouse click on your transform tab, I'm sorry, your commands tab. Let's tie in with a triangle, tie off with a triangle, and go ahead and apply. So I want you to see how wonderful our little hearts are and how well they're going to stitch out. Let's go ahead and look at our slow redraw. Let's go to view on the top toolbar left mouse click. I want you to left mouse click on the slow redraw and you'll see your slow redraw comes up and I want you to notice in our slow redraw we have some really nice features. The first feature I like is, do you notice how it's changed by colors? If all I wanted to see stitch out was my echo quilting, I could hold my left mouse key down on this tab and drag it over till I got to the echo quilting and then go ahead and tell it to play and watch that quilt out. So you can, you can pause, you can back up, you could grab this tab and drag it back. So you can see you've got a lot of control in your slow redraw. But let's watch this. I'm going to slow it down to its slowest speed and let's watch it. It's going to put down a line so I can place my pre-cut shape in. Then it's going to go ahead and it's going to stitch it down. It's going to finish our applique. Then it will come up as soon as it completes this turn and you notice how nicely it's doing it. It'll go around this and then it will go ahead and put my next placement. It will stop so I can place my fabric in and then it will continue to finish that. Let's speed him up just a little bit here. Well, I don't want to speed him up too much. It'll finish. It will go ahead and put my next placement. I'll put my fabric in and in this we're going to put fabric on the front and the back of our hot pad holder at the same time. There is your echo quilting and you have now completed your first applique project of the month. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned some new tricks and realized how easy it is now to bring anything in that you want to create an applique out of. And of course you wouldn't have to pick the e-stitch if you didn't want it. You could pick any type of stitch that you wanted from our applique menu. I could have gone ahead and left it at a satin stitch. We could have changed it to any kind of a motif or we could have had a lot of fun and selected a symbol to finish our applique. So I want to thank you for coming to this month's Project of the Month class and now I know you're eager to get on to the construction and embroidering of your hot pad. I want you to realize now that you have lots of options open. Think of the quilt blocks, think of the table runners, sweatshirts, all the things now that you can add, applique to, that have your own personal touch. I'm Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Thank you for coming today.